Good morning and welcome to The Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is what's the story? We're going to talk about how our stories shape our lives and our experience and what it looks like to curate our stories in a way that elevates and expands us into our fuller potentials. And before we get started, let's take a minute or two to get present. So let's take, oh, good morning, good morning, Rosalind, welcome. So good to have you joining us this morning and welcome to everybody else who's joining us on this Friday morning. Um, we're, before we get started looking at our stories, Good morning, Gia. Good morning. Good evening. Welcome. Great to be here with you as well. So good to have you joining us. Um, before we get started, let's just take a minute or two to get present. So let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, all your molecules, your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light and energy from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together. Vigorously rub your hands together to feel the friction, the pressure, the motion, the temperature, the tickling and tingling when you stop and allow all those sensations to bring you present right here, right now, into this remarkable physical form that enables us each to experience life. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So what's the story? What's the story that you tell about who you are and what your life is. What is that story? And is it a story that supports you? So many of us have negative stories about ourselves, like I can't seem to get out of my own way, or I'm not good enough, or I'll never be financially solvent, or all these kinds of um, limiting stories that we have about ourselves. Um, I'm not smart enough. I'm not this. I'm not that. Uh, stories we have about our culture, stories about where we are at this moment in time in the universe uh, as citizens of or family of planet Earth and galactic family. Um, Gia says stories about uh, when will I overcome my anxiety? So who I am, uh, my story is that I'm anxious. So I have a client who has a story that um, I've had, they've had a lifelong battle with anxiety. Um, so Gia says, is it only me going through it? My stories. It's not only you. We all have stories. And lots of us are experiencing anxiety. There's a lot to be anxious about if that's where we allow ourselves to be. You know, there are, there are times when we just become overcome with our stories. You know, um, so for instance, this this person used to have a story of I'm anxious all the time. I had another client that had a story of I'm anxious all the time. 
And when we looked into it more deeply, the fact was, no, it wasn't all the time. It might have been a lot of the time, but it wasn't all the time. And so if you know that you're not anxious all the time, then you know that it's possible to feel differently. You know that it's possible to have a different experience than anxiety. The thing is that when we're not anxious, when we're used to being anxious and we're not anxious, we often don't notice it, right? What we notice is the discomfort when we are anxious. And so one of the things that's prompting anxiety is, is a fear, the deep fear. And a fear of life, a fear of not doing it right, a fear of the other shoe dropping, a fear, all these, the, the thing that builds anxiety are the stories that we tell ourselves. Typically, we don't just feel anxious. There are occasions where your body will be in a state of anxiety and it's not it's not something that you can necessarily correlate to a conscious thought. But most often, anxiety, fear, sadness, anger, most often, even, even joy and love maybe, are um, a result of the stories we tell ourselves right? We create scenarios. Some people say uh, preparing for the worst and hoping for the best, for instance. Well, if you're preparing for the worst, what's the kind of, what kind of stories are you telling yourself? You know, there's an expectation of the worst. So how can you have an expectation of the worst and hope for the best? I'm not saying ignore taking the proper precautions around something. Um, I'm not saying be alert, you know, like be present and aware, but that awareness doesn't have to be compounded by anxiety. Um, anxiety often springs from trauma. You know, we've had, I, I, spoke with a client the other day who has had trauma upon trauma with natural disasters in California, fires and floods and just one thing after another and, and you know, challenges one after another. And they're, they were saying they noticed how they're always primed for an emergency. And that's, you know, like there's this uh, clenching, gripping all the time, just waiting to be in action for the call of an emergency. So that's another form of anxiety. Um, there are sensations in our bodies that can be really uncomfortable that we call anxiety. Um, and, and the thing is that if we can tell ourselves a story of life is happening for me, even if I don't see it, even if it doesn't make any sense, even if it feels horrible right now, life is happening for me. So, um, so Gia asks, have you gone through anxiety and medication for it ever, Mira? Though I am much, much better now, I am 60 to 70% healed. Wow. Congratulations, Gia. Good for you. No, I, I suffered more from depression than anxiety. I had very extreme depression and I never actually took medication I did once fill a prescription for it but I never really took uh, pharmaceuticals for depression um, although I you know my life probably would have been a lot easier if I had I don't I don't know 
but I know people that are on medication for anxiety. I have clients who have been on medication for anxiety and it has helped them to navigate in life. Um, and I've also, I also have clients who have been reducing their medication for anxiety, for example, and depression. So um, the thing is that it's not just the stories we tell. The stories we tell have a tremendous amount of power to activate chemical sets in our bodies and being, right? We can work ourselves into a state of fear and anxiety. And what that state is, is actually an interaction of, of energies and chemicals in our bodies. And then, you know, it's like a freight train. Sometimes it just goes on its own juice. And um, Gia says, I repeat this like a mantra. Life is happening for me, not to me. I have been on medication for seven or eight years now. It's very, very minimal dose, though, though five milligrams it's once a day. Well, congratulations on it being such a minimal dose. And so here, you know, I really appreciate what you're going through, Gia. And I really appreciate what you just said about you repeat the mantra, life is happening for me, for me and through me, not to me. Um, I used to repeat it too. In, in my in, you know, it probably, I could probably say anxiety, but fear, in my fear, in my depression, in my feeling of helplessness and hopelessness, I used to repeat that mantra, life is happening for me and through me, not to me. And the thing is that in repeating it, it's very different to repeat it because it doesn't feel like life is happening for you in those moments, right? It feels like I'm trying to convince myself of something that I can't believe. And so I invite you, rather than repeating the mantra, first breathe, first breathe. And then ask yourself, what would life be like? What would it be like if life were happening for me and through me rather than to me? How would I feel different? What would feel different in my body if I knew, if I really knew that life were happening for me? And I invite you to take, take that challenge right now, you know, just while we're here together to take a moment and breathe into, just settle for a moment and ask yourself, what would it feel like? What would my body feel like right now if I knew that life were happening, life was happening, is happening for me? If life is happening for me, if life is happening through me. Life is using me for its expression rather than something I have to defend against. If life is happening for me, even though I don't understand, even though all this stuff is happening, there's a space where I might be able to find some relaxation. I might be able to find some trust if I really believed that life was happening for me. And I invite you to just check in right now and notice what would it feel like if you could believe that. And one of the things that has really shifted for me so much with this notion of the hollow bone, you know, is to allow me 
whatever the me that I am is, to be a vehicle for life to express itself. And when I'm present to that, it transcends the me that's afraid. It allows me to be living in service to something greater. It allows me to be living in service to life rather than me having to do it right. Because life is always making corrections and adjustments. Life is a process. And it's not about me doing it right or wrong because I'm going to do it right and I'm going to do it wrong. And that's just life expressing itself. And so I want to just bring up when we talk about who we are, we, we think that we are this, this static entity, this fixed entity, right? And, we, and yet we're, we're focused or this group is focused on evolution and growth and development. But who are we really other than life expressing itself? If we look at a seed, is it a seed? Because when we put it in the earth, when we put it in the soil and it sprouts, is it, is it something new? It's now, it's now like a sprout, right? And then as it grows, let's say it's a, it's a seed of a tree, let's say it grows, then it's a sapling. And what happened to being a seed or a sprout? And then it becomes a, a tree. And what happened to the sapling and the seed? and the sprout, and then it grows fruit, and it goes through all these different stages. So when, what is it? Was it a tree when it was a seed? Is it a seed when it's a tree? Or is it a process of life unfolding? Is it life expressing itself through that unique vehicle? You know, when we're, when we're an infant, when we're an embryo, when we're an infant, when we're a toddler, when we're a preteen, a teenager, a young adult, an adult, a wise person, an elder, are we, are we any of those things? Are we all of those things? Are we life unfolding? And just as we have those many, many different monikers, those many, many different incarnations in our lives, those many manifestations in our lives, what is it that's continuous? through all our ups and downs, through all our behaviors, our consistencies and inconsistencies, what ties it together? Life. That who we are is life expressing itself through this unique vessel. And then we can be less attached to how life appears. We don't have to cling on to any one particular thing, even aging. So, uh, you know, like I have, I'm vain and I know a lot of other folks who are, well, we're all aging, but who are, in my age range who are aging and having cha challenges accepting the signs of age 
and the indicators of age and how our bodies are changing. And um, it's very different when we recognize it as life expressing itself from I am getting old. It's very different. And so Gia, I'm wondering if that shifts your experience in any way, instead of repeating the mantra to be present to, I'm life expressing itself. Life is happening for me and through me rather than to me. Does it feel any different? Is there any greater ease for you in that? Because in my experience with this is that it deepens, it gets deeper and deeper. Gia says, I'm loving it so much. Thank you, Mira, for this wonderfully counsel, for wonderfully counseling me and guiding me. Gia, you're so welcome. This is something that we all navigate. We all navigate this. Like, how do we be? in life? How do we be in the presence of life and in the expression of life? Life is process. It's not about how many toys you accumulate. It's not about anything, perhaps. And I'm, I'm saying that this is, this is what I'm playing with these days. It's, it's not about anything other than life expressing itself, living in its multitude of expressions. And we as humans elevate human achievements or, or define human achievements based on, you know, like keeping score, how much money, how many things, how much recognition, how many likes on social media, how many, you know, all of these are human manufactured metrics. How much impact? It's all very anthropocentric, anthropocentric. I think I said it right. Um, It's all life in every expression, every expression. And it's part of a much grander orchestration than we could ever fathom. At least that's what I contend. I don't have to be right about that. You check in and see what it feels like to you. But this this notion of the hollow bone where the bone is our uniqueness our unique vessel and life is flowing through it and the less impeded it is the more authentically it is the expression of that vessel Gia says, life is expressing itself in every way. Wow, I see no new doors of understanding opening. Exactly, exactly. Like when we, in big air quotes, behave badly, it's still life expressing itself in a multitude of ways. There's a space of forgiveness or curiosity or compassion that can emerge when we think about it in this way, that when we're ego identified, when we're trying to make a name for ourselves, when we're um, trying to be the best, um, it's if we're doing that out of joy and enthusiasm for learning and whatever, that's awesome. If we're doing it to try and make ourselves believe we're better than other people, that's a whole other thing. And 
what see the thing about this notion of life expressing itself connects us to all of life to our our feathered and furry and scaled and um four-footed and eight-footed and relatives on and on you know the rock people and the tree people we're connected to all of it when when we are life expressing itself there's just like i i'm so moved by it when i can allow myself to really be connected in life as an expression of life the web of life the life of the planet the life of the cosmos and we are part of its expression yeah it's profoundly freeing and it gets richer and richer as we allow ourselves to explore it more deeply. And so when I used to be chanting over and over and over the mantra, life is happening for me and through me rather than to me, it was with a sense of desperation that I was trying to allow myself to just let things be, to let life happen. But when I think of myself as an expression of life, a unique expression and an expression, it's a very different experience. And I am able to recognize that life is happening for me and through me. So with that, I wish you all a wonderful weekend filled with wonder, wonderful. And um, that's it for today. I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. And I go live here each weekday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel. And it is my pleasure and privilege to spend this time with you, to muse together, to explore and experience. And I'm just so grateful. Until next time, so much love to you.